Happy Easter. Jesus is alive. He's risen. Praise God. Praise God. This is going to be a special day for you, my friend. God knows exactly where you're at on this special day. At this moment in time in history, he sees you. God knows if you've been struggling with pain, sadness, discouragement, maybe a broken dream. Maybe you're feeling hopeless. He sees you. And yes, God cares for you. Let's pray right now. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, this special, special day. Father God, we believe we receive all that you have for us in the name of Jesus, our resurrected Savior. We celebrate his life, Lord. And as we go into the word of God, Father, we just pray that you unveil the name of Jesus, the identity of Christ, that we may step into all of the plans that you have for us, your destiny for us. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. We're talking, of course, about Jesus. This is actually part four on this Easter Sunday. Jesus, part four, and we're calling it the way, the truth, and the life. You know, this day is all about Jesus, but Jesus is all about you. There is always breakthrough in the name, in the true identity of Jesus. God's able and wanting to do something big for you today in that identity because today is the day of salvation. That's what God's word says. Here's what God wants to do and can do for you today, right now. Number one, Jesus is the way. You know what that means? That means he's the GPS. He's the directions. Are you feeling a little bit lost, maybe terribly lost? Well, Jesus is the way. He's our spiritual GPS directional. Number two, Jesus is the truth. That means he's the actual road. He's the infrastructure of the road, not just the map. He's the virtual infrastructure of life. And number three, he is the life. He's the roar of your life engine, revving up and reviving your hopes, your dreams. Yes, your eternity. Praise God. So what's the condition to receive all of this good treasure? You must believe on Jesus. That's right. You must believe to receive. Jesus, the Son of God, is the way, the truth, and the life. On this day, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, we better understand who you are and God's rich plans for your life by investigating who Jesus is, the way, the truth, and the life. As we discover Jesus' identity, we uncover the reality of your identity. That's true. The better we know him, the better we know you. Why? Why is this world so lost as they circle the drain on issues like gender and sexual identity? Because they don't know and they don't have, number one, the way, the life GPS. Number two, they don't have the truth the moral infrastructure, the road, the highway of life. And number three, they don't have the actual roar, the life, the engine, the power. That's who Jesus is, you see? And his identity reveals the Father. Oh, that's key. Jesus came to reveal the Father who is love. God is love. He told his disciples, Jesus said to his disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Damon John from Shark Tank TV show recently said this in an interview. He said, no financial intelligence is being taught to this next generation. We need to teach them how to handle money, he said. Well, I agree, but there's a far greater need right now with our culture. We need identity intelligence. Without it, you struggle, you hate, you end up murdering, you die. We've seen that on TV. Jesus came to save us for identity intelligence. Because until you know who you are, you cannot be who God made you to be. Jesus, the Son of God, came to make us sons and daughters, children of the Most High God. It's the highest identity in all of eternity. In this series called Jesus, we've looked at Jesus' identity as the Lion and the Lamb. We looked at Jesus as the Son of God, the Son of Man. Some almost had their hair catch on fire, realizing that God humbled himself to take on an earthen body like the first Adam. And that's why Jesus is called the last Adam. 
God's word burns down religious thinking. And yes, that's a good thing. In part three, we uncovered more about our identity as we realized Jesus is both the king and the priest. Through each matrix, we learn more of the expanse of Jesus' power and character. And this is not designer identity or fluid identity where Jesus changes like a chameleon depending on the background. No, 1,000 times no. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, our life. And when he speaks, he authors from the invisible, unseen into the manifest reality. That's exciting because today we need that life engine roar, a revival revival of sorts. Oh, no matter how bad things are or no matter how blessed you are, regardless of the circumstances, up, down, sideways, no matter what you've been labeled, my friend, God is not confused about the good things that he has always, always planned for your life. Jesus is creator and able to speak a new, a better, upgraded, improved reality for your life, my friend, but it will require you believing on him. That's right. You will have to believe on him, all of him. Now, here's the reality. Without a biblical view of Jesus, we easily slide into moral bankruptcy. That is an open door to confusion and cognitive dissonance that's on steroids. Love informs our morality, distinguishing between good and evil, helping us choose. The real Jesus is truth and love. The moral compass, knowing that what's good and what's evil, we need to know that. Are you struggling today? Well, Jesus is the way, he's the GPS, Jesus is the truth, he's the roadway, and Jesus is the life. He's the roar of your engine for life. He's the one that can revive us. He's lion and lamb. We need all of Jesus. So come with me, come with me on a journey and see why Jesus actually came to earth. For the next few minutes, let's uncover the truth. God's truth has transforming power. If, if you allow it into your heart, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Let's look at this reality. Jesus is downloading these mysteries to his disciples just before going to the cross. Here we are in John 14, verses six and seven. Jesus said to him, one of the disciples, he said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by and through me. Never forget this. Jesus came to reveal the Father. That's God. God is love. Verse 7, if you had known me, Jesus said, had learned to recognize me, you would have also known my Father. From now on, you know him, the Father, and have seen him. You see, the identity of Jesus leads us to God the Father. Why is that so important? Well, Jesus is the way, truth, and life. But why is this matrix of identity significant? Because it brings us to the Father, to love. I've talked about the broad spectrum of Jesus' identity as the lion and the lamb, as the son of God and the son of man, as the king and as the priest, each duality expressing his authentic power and identity. In this scripture, the matrix is not dual, but it's a triple thread. Jesus is the way, meaning our GPS. He's the truth, meaning the road, the infrastructure to destiny. The completion of this triple thread matrix from John 14, 6 is Jesus is the life. He's the roar of your engine. He's the engine of life powering us onward, upward to our destiny. He overrides our greatest fear and threat. You know what that is? Death. Jesus is resurrection life, delivering us from the finality of the grave. He makes us deathless. Oh, Pastor Stephen, are you kidding me? No, I'm not. Jesus makes you deathless because he is the resurrection and the life. Yes, Jesus' identity, the matrix of his character, is that he is the life. When we choose him, Christ, as the way, we've got life direction. His truth is the infrastructure of that wisdom we call a highway of life. And finally, the third strand is Jesus as life roaring, revving, reviving, and empowering up our true destiny. Think for a moment of an aircraft. There are three fundamentals of flight, lift, thrust, and control. 
We think of flight as one amazing act or an amazing thing, but it's made up of three elements, three things, lift, thrust, control. Jesus is the way, truth, the life. On May 29th, 2021, a plane took off from Nashville, Tennessee, headed for Florida. It had seven passengers on board, all leaders of a local church in Brentwood, which by the way is where Pam and I used to live when we first got married. Shortly after the plane took off, the pilot lost control and crashed into a lake, killing everyone on board. The National Transportation Safety Board did an investigation of the accident. They determined that the pilot lost control of the plane during the initial climb due to something that they call spatial disorientation. Spatial disorientation is the inability of a person to determine his or her true body position, motion, and altitude in relation to the earth or the surroundings. Airplane pilots and underwater divers encounter this phenomenon. It's not that unusual. What happened on that fateful day, according to the investigators, is the airplane entered the clouds and then began making several climbs and descents, along with peculiar changes in headings. It was like the pilot was trying to find his way. Finally, the plane entered a steep descending term. All of these random turns and changes indicated a pilot under the influence of spatial disorientation. The NTSB concluded that the pilot was not relying on instrumentation during the takeoff and climb. So relying on feelings, his natural orientation, he put the plane unintentionally into a high acceleration speed and thinking he was going up, he actually steered the plane down, crashing it into a lake, killing everybody on board. What a tragedy. The fundamentals weren't working together. Do you have the way, the truth, and the life, my friend? Are you being led by feelings? Is it possible you have a bad case of spatial disorientation, in this case, life disorientation? How do you know that you're going the right way? It only takes a split second to crash. And just because you haven't crashed yet doesn't mean that you're safe and you're going the right way. Jesus didn't come to take away our controls for life. He came to give you life and restore your authority and the roar for life to give it back to you. Your feelings are lying to you, my friend. Remember, the triple matrix of Christ is the revelation of the Father God. Why is that such a big deal? Because it confirms that we are the family of God, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Without this matrix of Christ's identity, we don't have our identity. We're just angry slaves to sin. Albert Einstein once said this, whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted with important matters. That's our society. We've neglected the moral fundamentals. We're crashing right now as a culture. John 3, starting at verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him, Jesus, shall not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world in order to judge the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through Jesus. Jesus came to prevent us from crashing our destiny, our eternity. He's not condemning you, my friend. God sent Jesus to make you safe and sound, not to judge you, not to hurt you. It's the ultimate of inclusivity meets the ultimate of exclusivity. God loves humanity, giving his only begotten son for all. That's ultimate inclusivity. Can you see it? Now it meets with the most refined, sharp point of exclusivity. Whoever believes on Jesus. Who? Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, period. Now you might say, well, that, that seems kind of non-inclusive, Pastor Stephen. Well, do you know any other God that put off his rightful dignity and privilege to die on a cross for you? I didn't think so. Moral blindness demands equity, inclusion, truth, 
recognizes Jesus died, shed his blood on the cross to crown you, my friend, to crown you with glory and adopt you into the family of God. Now that's inclusion as a gift, a grace, an undeserved favor. Believe me, we don't want what we deserve. Look, there's a reason why 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight, not by feelings. Why? Because feelings were never meant to lead. They're not calibrated to lead you through life. And yet society makes the argument that feeling it makes it true. Well, let's be honest. Most of the time the earth feels flat. Do you believe that's true? Of course not. You may feel angry at the villain in your favorite Marvel movie, but maybe the worst crime that actor's ever committed is speeding in his Tesla. Just recently, there were terrible tornadoes in the South heartbreaking loss of life and devastating destruction of many homes and businesses. Did it matter if the residents felt like everything was all right the day before? Do feelings protect you from the storms of life, the trials of life? No, they don't. Feelings are subjective. They're useful as long as they're mastered by the real you, but the moment they have a vote or try to dictate who you are, you're headed for a storm. You're going to crash your life into the side of a mountain feeling like you were going up when you were actually racing down. Don't trust your identity to feelings. You need the way, the truth, and the life. As the Bible says, there is salvation in no other name, no other identity, but Jesus. We need the real way. We need the real way, the truth, and the life. That's Jesus. That Jesus who fulfilled all the messianic prophecies given over the past thousands of years. In Hebrew, Jesus' name is pronounced Yeshua. He fulfilled at least 324 prophecies as Messiah in the Old Testament. Some of these prophecies went back thousands of years to Genesis 3. Here's just a few of the prophecies that Jesus, Yeshua, fulfilled. Listen to this. Messiah would be born of a virgin. We get that from Isaiah 7. Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. He would be preceded by a messenger. Here's another prophetic word. Messiah is to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. He would be betrayed by a friend. That was a prophecy. Messiah is prophesied to be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. He's to be executed by piercing his hands and feet. Another prophetic word was Messiah is crucified without having a bone broken. He's put on a cross like a thief, Jesus. Messiah is to be raised from the dead. Now that's why we celebrate Jesus, our victorious savior. These are just a few prophecies from the Tanakh, the Old Testament about Jesus. Peter Stoner, he was the late mathematician and astronomer, and he concluded this. He said, the chance of a single man fulfilling just 48, 48 of the prophecies found in the Tanakh, he said, would have been one in 10 to the power of 157. That's 157 zeros. So to help understand that probability, Peter went on and he gave us an illustration. Listen to this. Suppose he said we take 10 to the power of 17, just 17 zeros. And we take that many silver dollars and we lay them on the face of the state of Texas. He said that would cover Texas two feet deep in these silver dollars. Can you just imagine that? Now mark just one silver dollar and then stir the whole mass of silver dollars together thoroughly. Blindfold a man and tell him to pick up one silver dollar and it must be the exact right one. What's the chance he would pick up that right one? He said it's the same chance the prophets would have had giving even just eight prophecies, just eight prophecies, and having them all come true in any one man. And remember, there were actually over 324 prophecies that came true about Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua. Praise God for his amazing accuracy. God is awesome. 
Jesus said this in John 20, verse 29. He said, blessed and happy and to be envied are those who have never seen me and yet they have believed and adhered to and trusted and relied on me. Now you can't be blessed walking according to your feelings. You can't fly good flying by your feelings. You can't live good without the fundamentals of the GPS, the wings, and the engine's roar. Jesus is the way, he's the truth, and Jesus is the life. Jesus came to forgive us of our sins, but to also give us power to live life strong. You don't get that stamping your feet saying, well, I insist on being led by my feelings. No, all of this points to something important, your decisions. You can fly by your feelings or you can fly by the fundamentals of the way, the truth, the life. You can let your feelings, your senses lead you or you can be led by someone who designed not only the heavens and the earth, but you. He designed you. He designed your life. Jesus died to save you from death, but also to give you full access to the instrument panel of life. But if you choose to fly by your feelings and not the accurate gauges of life, the outcome will be sad, even disastrous. It doesn't mean God doesn't love you, my friend. Many Christians call on the name of Jesus to save them from hell but then refuse the fundamentals of the way, the truth, and the life. Instead, they trust in their feelings. They guess about what Jesus said. They don't really know him, so they guess at their own identity, making up religious rules and traditions that frustrate themselves and everyone around them. Let me pray this for you right now. Be set free from that deception in Jesus' name. Corey Ten Boom, the Christian author and speaker who worked with her father to save many Jewish people from the Nazis during the Holocaust and World War II. They were then cut off themselves and put in a concentration camp. She said this, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Believing Jesus died for your sins is a start, but you still have to fly the plane, so to speak. You're called to live life strong, but you need the fundamentals. How do you do that if you refuse the Savior's GPS, his infrastructure, his engine roar to life and revival? Just because you believe Jesus hung on the cross doesn't mean you made Jesus your boss. Oh my goodness, that rhymes. A famous investor once said this, be wrong, but be wrong fast. That means own it, repent. It's okay to be wrong. We're all wrong in life. The Bible says all have sinned. Be wrong, but be wrong fast. You need to make a life decision. Yes, a Jesus decision. Let me minister to you and tell you who Jesus is. There's an anointing from God right now in the midst of where you're at. Jesus came to save you, not reject you. Recognizing our great need for him is fundamental to life. You need him because only he has the power to unlock your design from the captivity of sin and darkness. You need Jesus because only he has the power to restore your immortal destiny and make you God's child. He transfers the identity of God's family name into and onto your life. That's why it's critical that I tell you just exactly who Jesus is. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith, the Almighty One. He is the Good Shepherd. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the Great High Priest. He's our advocate, our deliverer, and the mediator between God and man. Jesus is the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. He is the Righteous One. He's the savior of the world, our redeemer, the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah. He's the bridegroom and the head of the church. The book of Revelation calls him faithful and true. Yes, Jesus is the son of God and the son of man, the last Adam. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He's the seed of Abraham and the son of David, Yeshua. Jesus is the babe in the manger at Bethlehem the son of the blessed Virgin Mary. He is the carpenter from Nazareth. 
He's the teacher from Galilee, rabbi, master, and Lord. He's the only perfect, sinless one able to take our sin to the cross and once and for all free us from the curse of sin by his blood. He poured out his own blood on the cross for you and me. Yes, God's word calls him the firstborn of the dead. He died but raised up from the grave. He is the bread of life and the source of the living water. Jesus is the I am. Jesus is the line of the tribe of Judah and he is the lamb of God slain from the foundation that takes away the sins of the world. He is the indescribable gift. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and yet Acts 4 calls him the holy servant dying for humanity. Yes, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He is judge of both the living and the dead. Jesus, the mighty one, the master of the wind and the waves, he is creator of everything. Jesus is both the power of God and the wisdom of God. He baptizes us with his Holy Spirit and fire. Oh, I could go on. Should I go on? Yes, Jesus is the sole expression of the glory of God. He is the perfect imprint and image of God's nature. That's why why I say you don't have a clue about you until you know him. Jesus is the rock with unfailing supply. He is the bright and morning star. He's the fourth man in the fire. He's the amen, the hallelujah, and the bishop of our souls. Yes, Jesus is the risen savior with healing for all. His roar is a roar of freedom. He is our hope, our peace, the true prophet of our destiny. You've got a future in Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the king of the kingdom and he is preeminent over all. He is the destroyer of darkness, disease, death, and the devil. His eyes are a blazing fire. Jesus is the word of God, the will of God, and the true vine. He is the root of Jesse. Yes, he is the wonderful counselor, mighty, everlasting God, and the prince of peace. Jesus is the victorious one, seated on the heavenly throne with God the Father. He alone is worthy. Worthy, worthy to break the seven seals and open the scroll of heaven. He alone is worthy to open the scroll of destiny and write your identity in the book of life. Jesus alone is worthy of all the praise, honor, and the glory. Do you know him? Do you really, really know Jesus? For God has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name in heaven and in earth and under the earth. That name, what's that name? The name of Jesus. Devils and demons tremble at that name. That name is the preeminent identity in all of the universe, in all of eternity. That name brings a vast innumerable empire of angelic forces to a reverent and honorable attention. Every one of them just waiting for a word from Jesus the supreme commander of their ranks. And right now, right in this moment, at this very second in time, the priest, the high priest, the king himself is reaching out to you, offering you his life and his name. The great mediator is stretching out his arms to be a bridge for you into the family of God. His victory at the cross is speaking today, right now, to you. God so loves you. God so loves you. The better we know Jesus, the better we know ourselves, our destiny. You have no true identity without him. God doesn't replace you, he redeems you. Jesus is the way to that love. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Isn't it time you see Jesus? Come home. Come home now to God's love. Pray this prayer after me and invite Jesus into your heart. Jesus, I believe on you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Through you, I'm saved. I believe you died on the cross for me. God raised you up from the grave. Forgive me for all of my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be the Lord of my life. Lead me from this day on. In your name, Jesus, amen. 
Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.